Hello there, Dr. Miller with another daily dose. It's a daily, I'm not doing these daily. Whenever I dose you, um, that sounds terrible, uh, with information. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't already subscribed, I'm just going to jump right at it. Subscribe, man. I need you. I need you to get me to the Lambo lifestyle. Because if I can get to 1,000 subs, you get your channel monetized. And then I can upload commercials every five seconds and make like 20 cents per million views. Let's do this together. I told you before in another video, like that always annoys me. Like, let's do this together. Like you, you don't get anything out of it other than me making more videos. So um, I'm sorry, but do subscribe to the channel though, if you wouldn't mind, all kidding aside. Um, and like this video if you end up liking it. You may not after I have what to say in this one. Uh, and look at other all the other cool videos I have. All right, let's get to it. Enough, enough of that chitty chat stuff. Okay, now I, what I have here today, it's not really... It's not a journal club. I don't want to call it a journal club. It's more how, you know, I know that there's these reaction videos, like people will watch stuff and then react to them. Um, I'm, I'm reacting to a popular media story in the area of exercise sports science, kind of peripheral to it. Um, but it's not peripheral to it, more of a, um, just as a part of this big umbrella of, of exercise and sports science. And I wanted to react to it because um, it, I think it does two things. It, it one, it, it really just shows how popular media can take something in the research literature and just turn it into something it isn't and how we need to be careful, uh, whether we're talking about dietary practices or something a little more, um, um, more macro here, like I have today, we need to be careful when we, we trust the popular media, you can go find the actual resources that are being peddled and then read them. Like, don't, don't just latch on and my encouragement, you can do whatever you want. My encouragement is that you don't just latch on to whatever popular media says. And so this may or may not be of interest to you. Um, uh, you may want to, you know, if, if you hear what I'm talking about, just give it a chance and, you, you know, may want to kind of stick back. I'll get back into more like the sets and reps and hypertrophy. And um, I saw one of the comments about a video. I'm going to do one on um, what, what some of the things we can do as we, we age. I know that's an interest. Um, you know, how, what are some adjustments need to be made as we age and how do we, you know, continue to gain mass as we age? And um, I think those are great questions. Uh, and, um, you know, for many of us, I've reached that point. I remember listening to old people and that was designation was 40 years or older. Those old people would talk about, you know, I don't, I don't care. You know, I want to know about performance and like people in the early twenties and in their late teens. And now I'm 45 and I get it. <laughs> I'm interested in those topics about being old people too. So anyway, let's get to this today. Um, you may have seen a, st a story in the news. Maybe you haven't. Uh, by a very one of the big news outlets in the United States, pushing this this I'm going to use the word narrative here because that's the only way I can describe it. This narrative that climate change was causing um, changes in um, childhood fitness and childhood obesity. And I'm uh, I'm going to try to stay out of the rabbit trails here of climate change. Uh, this is not what this video is about um, per se. What it is though, and I will mention it a little bit, but I'm you know uh, this is that's topic for another probably another channel even. Um, but what I will say is that this this is one of the worst cases of popular media bastardizing, if I can use that word, um, the research literature I have seen in a very long time, very long time. So the the actual report from this media um, linked again obesity, childhood obesity, childhood uh, uh, drop in childhood fitness levels to climate change, and reported that this study, so it's called a study. Um, had found that there was declining rates in fitness, cardiovascular, um, or cardiovascular, cardiorespiratory endurance in children uh, of 0.36% per year. Uh, and this was um, done in all these children. Okay. Let me tell you what actually the deal is. And this is, again, just a class example. Of this. So the study that was cited in that popular media article, uh, popular media article and post and all this stuff is not a study. It's a review. It's a review. So it was a review article called Moving in a Hotter World, Maintaining Adequate Childhood Fitness as, a, as Climate Change Countermeasure. It's a review. If you're not familiar with the research literature, review is like a book chapter. It's You pull all the available information about a topic. You're assumed to be some sort of expert in that area. And then you spew it out. And the way you, you can peddle the information, I don't, I don't mean that in a negative way. I, I've written a book by myself. That means that I can pull all the data and maybe even cherry pick the data and then spit it out however I want. I can spin a narrative. I can spin 
how uh, my perceptions of the of the information. Well, that's where the peer review process can be helpful because the peer reviewer can say, well, this is more of your opinion than it is. There's no citation here. You can't, you know, if you say this, then you need to make sure you acknowledge an opinion, so on and so forth. So in many ways, a comprehensive review is just a fact-checked to some degree blog post or a book chapter. And that's not a negative thing. If you, if you go to the Journal of Sports Medicine, um, fantastic reviews in there um, that are done on a variety of topics. Wonderful. Um, you know that the the authors, though, that this is why you need to see where the authors are from, what they've done. You know, are they citing themselves a lot, right? Um, these are important things to look at when you're looking at a review, but it doesn't mean they're worthless. I'm just saying that you have to understand what they are. I read them all the time. I think they're very, it's like reading a, a book. It's like a short little book on a, on a maybe a niche topic, and it can be really, is it niche or niche? niche? My wife says it's niche. I think I've adopted the way she said it. Topic, I think, this, I think that's great. So that's what this study, it is not an original research study, you know, where, 15 people ran around the block and the 15 stayed in my office and then the people who ran around the block, we measured everybody's leg length and the people who ran around the block got longer legs for some reason. <laughs> I mean, that's an original research study. There's an experimental design involved with it. This is just a review. So anyway, this was, let me just talk about this. I'm not from the, the journal was called temperature. I'm not, I don't read in this area of the research literature. I'm not, it's, it's published by Fra Taylor and Francis. It's an open access journal. I, I could have screenshotted it as we talked about it, but I hope you don't mind talking, but you can download it is what I'm getting at. It's open access. So you can grab this, Moving in a Hotter World, Maintaining Adequate Childhood Fitness as a Climate Change Countermeasure by Morrison. Um, Shonda Morrison, she's a faculty of sport at the university. I won't try to say it, but it's in Slovenia. Okay. And so what is this then? And where did the popular media get this? So first of all, it's not a study. So they just took something and turned it into something it wasn't. And number two, what this really is, is the author... And there's only one author. I, you know, with reviews, a lot of times it's nice to see two authors because there's balancing ideas, but it doesn't mean one author is bad. Like, again, I'm the only author in my book. Um, that's not very good. That's <laughs> But the point is, is that, you know, it's nice to have other eyeballs on things. And I don't know how the pre-reviewed process works for temperature. I don't know how many reviewers read it. There's 150 citations here. So the assumption is that whoever reviewed this knows their stuff because they're probably not going to go back and review all the 150 citations. Hopefully they've read most of those things. Now, the if you remember the title of this it was the the motivation for this when i can gather and it's a little bit all over the place at times but the motivation i can gather from this particular article is that children are unfit obese they're more susceptible to injury heat related injury and with climate changing and the world getting hotter kids are going to be more apt to have problems with this climate and they're going to stay out of the climate there's a case made for that and they're going to it's going to spiral in a negative direction so kids will get even more unhealthy as a result. I'm trying to, you know, I read this the other day and I'm trying to remember, I didn't see, I didn't see the author, um, at least when I can tell, try to tie together that current fitness problems uh, in children and obesity issues in children are linked to climate change now. It's more of a prophetic thing. And this is the, you know, this is my critique of this article is, um, I know climate change is a highly politicized thing. I don't, uh, I don't have a, a problem with because I've seen the temperature data, which is some of the simplest things that the, the climate is getting hotter. The Earth always goes through these cycles. We had an ice age, right? If you there's some old maps um, back from like the age of sail when they do the map like the North Sea, and there there's these like areas where the you know they're basically drawn in there. Hey, be careful because these are really shallow areas. You can beat your ship. Well, you know, we don't have those in maps now because the water's deeper. So this has been ha this climate change has been happening for a while, and again, I don't want to go down this rabbit trail, but what I'm what it needs to be realized here is there's a political component to this. Okay, there's money and politics involved with climate change now, and so climate change is a political term. People campaign on climate change. There is um, a lot of pro prophecy associated with climate change, and and if you go back and read history, this has been around a long time. Um, it's nothing, it's not new. Like people have been predicting the end of the world in very con various contexts, but through the lens of climate change for a very long time. I think of um, even like, um, I always say his name wrong. I'm going to say Malthus, Malthusianism. Malthusian is Malthusianism. I always, I always mess that up. If for some reason his name messes, but he, you know, uh, he's wrote an essay about um, population issues and now the, the population was growing exponentially and the food supply was only growing linearly and eventually the world would run into trouble. And, I don't think he, I don't know, I didn't meet the man in the late 1700s, if I recall, 
but that movement or that paper and those ideas led to things like eugenics. So some pretty nasty stuff. Now, am I saying climate change is going to lead to eugenics? No, that's not what I'm talking about. What I am saying though, is that this, these kind of prophetic doomsday things have been around a while. And if you read the article, you know, it's all the citations related to this doomsday thing are related to like the who's modeling, right? And, the, and committees that have formed models. If you know anything about models, models can be manipulated. I, I've run modeling and it, I don't mean manipulated in a, even in a negative, like a nefarious way. It's more just if you have inputs, you, if you tweak them a little bit, you can get all kinds of wacky results. I remember being very, uh, around these the ROC curves, rock curves on so, a particular, and it was like, I thought I had this thing dialed in. I found something really cool. And then I realized if I just tweak the inputs a little bit, my result went away. Okay. So that's my critique of climate change here is this is more of a, there's like two things going on. That's why I think this whole paper is a nothing burger, to be honest with you. That's, that's kind of my summary. If you want to just skip ahead here, it, it's a nothing burger. The popular media took this and blew it up into something. It wasn't the paper is a nothing burger. Okay. It's somebody with kind of a prophetic the the world the end of the world is coming according to all these quote unquote experts there's a lot of logical fallacies I'll just add it but um and then on the other side of it was just some basic environmental like if you read this you'll get a good dose like a, a good lessons on like environmental physiology why do kids struggle with heat because they don't uh, evaporation is lower in children they have a, a greater body volume um, compared to um, surface area right as adults so you know, there's more, more refrigerator box like, right? And so um, it's hard for them to dissipate heat. They don't drink as much, right? So that's your pool of water. And the whole fitness angle is the fitter you get, the more blood volume you get because the better you are at cooling. It seems to kind of go backwards what we think, but you actually become better at cooling yourself. And so your blood volume expands. And so if your blood volume expands, that means you need to have more blood volume, right? Where's blood volume come from? Fluid intake, right? And so those are all like, this is, this is good stuff. She, you know, the author points out, um, that there's more heat injuries in the summer for kids. I mean, uh, like, okay. <laughs> hey, she's trying to put together the pieces here to say kids are more susceptible to heat injuries. Here's some, here's when it's hotter out, kids get more heat injuries. Um, the kind of this apocalyptic things happening with the climate, kids aren't going to be ready. And then that's going to keep them out of the, out of activity already as it is. And then, right. It's going to push them inside and we're going to get this negative spiral. Now, you know, there's a lot of things to think about with this as well. And I, I didn't want to turn this into a full critique of this particular paper, but I just saw the popular media thing and it was irritating to be honest with you. I just wanted to address this, but I mean, there's more people living in hotter climates than ever before. Like I live close to Houston. Well, not that close, but it's down, it's six hours away to Houston. It's friggin' hot down there. Or like, if you've ever been to Phoenix, Arizona, right? Well, how are those cities grown air conditioning? They have. So what if kids go inside and start to play sports inside? Like society tends to adjust to things. Uh, she does acknowledge in this paper, like how do kids get to where they are today? Well, screen time, right? Um, I'm, I don't, I didn't remember seeing much about food intake. I'm trying to remember now. Um, but you know, poor, I'll just throw in a poor food intake, poor dietary practices. Look at kids meals. I mean, they're just awful, right? Not like I have, I haven't had my kids eat them, but <laughs> you get the point, right? I mean, there's all these inputs. This is like, this is a complex situation, breakdown of the family structure. Um, you know, parents pushing kids to get outside the, the birth of youth sports and the reliance on youth sports for all things activity. I mean, there's all these inputs that contribute to childhood obesity, increases in childhood obesity and decreases in childhood fitness. And you might think, why does sports have to do with it? Because if kids are playing sports, that's all they do. I, I've seen this quite a bit. They don't move better and they don't move at all outside of the sports practices. Their fitness is actually worse. And then when the season ends, whatever sport it is, if they don't play another one, which is very common now because we specialize so much, the kids' fitness goes down. So that's all part, you know, this whole paper is, is again, a pretty good environmental fizz lesson. Um, it doesn't tie together, though. From what I could tell, and I think the author wants to, wants to tie together that the current situation of, of climate, you know, the climate change and the climate getting warmer, it, it wants to tie together that the current situation with children is as a result, but I, I didn't really see her make a, a demonstrative effort to do that. There, I circled one paragraph here that kind of highlights that, but um, I lost it. Now, the whole like decline in, this is the other thing the popular media latched on, the whole decline in fitness level, 0.36% uh, decline in fitness level for every um, year. This was a study that was actually, now I haven't read the study, okay? This was in MSSE, which is the Journal of American College of Sports Medicine, a reputable journal, all right? And it was a study in 2007, if I recall, and 
from what I can tell, this was a study that they actually tracked fitness. Now, the author also in this review goes on about how it's hard to track um, activity level and in kids. And then, you know, there's apparently 25 to 50 million kids as part of this study. <laughs> wow. And so I want to go see this article. Maybe I'll do a journal club on it. If anybody, if you're interested, drop a comment. If not, I won't bother. Um, but about the tracking this fitness. So they came up with this kind of global, um, I don't know if it's an estimate. I need to look and see. But she cited it in this paper, this other study. I, apparently it was a study. Okay. So the popular media, though, took a study cited in her paper, a review paper, and linked it to climate change. <laughs> this is just crazy. Like it's just the it's one of the worst abuse worst abuses of of research that I've seen. Okay, and that's saying a lot, especially when you talk about dietary nutrition literature. All right, um, I don't know how much more I'm gonna say about this. Oh, the last thing I will, I will uh, I could go on. There's a lot of conflicting things, and um, there's problematic. Again, the whole prophecy thing is problematic. Like we don't know what's gonna happen in the future. You know, what's the thing they always say about stocks? Like past performance is not indicative of future success or future right performance or future movement of stuff. Well, you're using modeling to predict things. And there's been a lot of predictions over the year that have, years that have never come to fruition. Um, and so I think we need to be careful. With this, this paper is, because it's a nothing burger though, it, it has this prophetic climate change stuff and then it has kids aren't prepared and here's a physiology lesson on why kids aren't prepared and why they should be. Okay, fine. And then she tries to merge the two. Um, okay. Now, the last thing I'll say about this paper that is in what I found interesting, though, is um, she, if you remember, remember, she's from Slovenia. The author is from Slovenia, and she cites the slow fit. It's called slow fit. S L S capital S L O fit. I'm assuming that's like short for Slovenia fit. And she cites a couple papers, which I have not read, that the Slovenian kids, children, are some of the fittest, like they're, they're more fit than your average kid. Okay, I'll, sure, I'll take your word for it. Citations provided. Um, and in this particular part of the paper, though, she was trying to tie together that, and the, again, a lot of things she says in here are, are spot on, like the physiology and everything. Yeah, okay. But she said something I agree with as well, is that in this group that they track fitness every year, that in, the, the, in 30 years, this was the worst fitness level. This paper was published in 2022. This was the f worst year in terms of fitness in these um, kids that they'd seen. Okay, so 30 years of data collection, over 30 years of data collection, this is the worst levels of fitness the kids have ever seen. Well, what happened in the last two years, COVID-19, the lockdowns, shutdowns? And what she was saying in the paper is that, you know, if kids can't go outside and play because it's too hot, then they are going to, right, they're going to have a similar like COVID-19 type of situation. Um, where there's withdrawal and right, it's not going to be good for the kids. Their fitness levels will decline. And maybe that's what popular media ran with too. I don't know. But this is what I find really interesting and kind of sad at the same time is that the same popular media outlets that were pushing lockdowns and have, you know, we all made mistakes during COVID. We all did. Uh, I, did I did things. I was like, ah, why did I do that? You know, but nobody's ever apologized for saying, look, eh, we kind of missed it, messed that one up. Okay. These same new organizations though, this news organization that peddled all this fear mongering to push kids to the situation where they couldn't go out and play and, and their fitness levels were lower. These same news outlets then are peddling more finger fear mongering. In this case, it's the world is going to come to end. We're all going to burn up in the face of the sun and kids, you know, um, they're, they're becoming more obese and becoming less fit be as a result of this. It's the same crap. If I'm going to use, I use that word, word in all seriousness, the same crap that that's irritating. You know, here's a study that actually has some real fitness data that apparently is citing some real fitness data, excuse me, that um, I'd like to go see it. Maybe I will go take a look that the COVID-19 shutdown is, this is not the only piece of data there is, right? There's lots of this type of data and so of course, mental health and other issues has, has caused damage to the fitness levels of these kids. And we're going to do it again. Like we're going to promote the same fear mongering now and, and freak everybody out about climate change. Um, when there's, if you want to talk about, you know, misinformation, this is it. This is a classic example. So that's why I wanted to talk about it. It was just, it was an, even if we can, we can argue about climate change and whether it's man-made or not. Okay. That can be a different thing. I'm not interested in that. What I am interested in though, is as 
people in a society, um, if we do not engage in critical thinking, if we do not question things that come through the media, knowing that, and in the scientific literature, scientists are biased. They like money too. I'm not saying this author is, I'm talking just in general. I, I like, I like to make a paycheck. I mean, as much as I like to talk about this, I like to make a paycheck. I need to take, I want to take care of my family. I need to take care of my family. Okay. And so does that mean I'm going to do any things that are unethical? No, of course not. But what I'm getting at is we're all, we have a bias. We have a bias. And what motivates people, you know, a lot of times is money, success, fame, all those type of things. And so we just need to acknowledge that, right? And the same with the media. Well, why do they peddle stuff? Because you'll look at it and you'll read it <laughs> and you'll consume it. And then they can sell advertising off of it and they make money, right? And so if they, and who knows what kind of climate change businesses are profiting off of their fear mongering, okay? I'm not disputing whether the climate change is happening. What I, am, have, what I have a problem with is the abuse of the research literature in order to peddle a narrative. And in this case, the research literature was not at all what is being peddled. Not at all. Zero. Um, and if anything, is a, should be a slap in the face of fear-mongering. And what it's done in the, you know, this article, that, that, this research study that was, studied, uh, that was cited in here, you know, with the drop in fitness levels in kids. And with the damage we've done to kids by fear-mongering. Instead of thinking clearly and, and viewing research literature and practicing the science that we um, apparently... Uh, we we can, we think that we uphold at this high super high standard that we we live all our lives by the science okay well i don't think we're practicing the art of science anymore and i may those two words may seem weird to go together but science is an art it's a way of knowing and well, that requires other people um you know to interact with each other and talk about it and talk about the data and you know when you get a news outlet you don't get that is is my youtube Assessment of bias? Yeah, sure. Sure it is. And guess what? This is a chance to practice, I guess. Here's the here's the article. Okay? You guys can go download it yourself and take a look at it. See what you think. See if I'm full of poop. Yeah. And I won't mention the news outlet, but it's easy to find. Just type it into the Google um, and you'll be able to find it. But um, let's practice some... I'm talking to myself. Let's practice some critical thinking. And there's times I've been suckered right too uh and probably more than you uh but we need to we need to start thinking critically about what's being spewed out um uh, in the popular media uh we need to go find the sources the primary sources a lot of times you'd be surprised that there there's been a lot of um liberties taken okay i'll see you in the next video